The power of positive speaking. Words have power. Everything that God ever created, he created by speaking words. Uh, we read in Genesis, in the beginning chapters, that God spoke. In Psalm 33, it's very clear the words of God have power. And whether it be God creating light or the vastness of the cosmos, uh, the planets, the galaxies, the magnificent spiral galaxies, the, the nebula, the different cloud gases, uh, and so on of the cosmos, God did it by speaking words. Ten times in Genesis 1, God said is repeated. And we as human beings are not to live just by bread, but by words. Words which come from the mouth of God that will never fail to accomplish. The question then is, who is Jesus? Well, we know that Jesus is not just a good man or a prophet or an angel. Jesus is God. Uh, John chapter 1 speaks about in the beginning was the Word, referring to Jesus. And he was God. And when he walked among us on earth, his words had power, as indicated by the centurion who said, Lord, just speak the word, and my servant would be healed. Humans are God's highest order of creation. Uh, to no other did he say, let us create them in our image and after our likeness. And so I just suggest that the unique ability that human beings have for cognitive speech is shared by no other living organism. Whales, dolphins, primates just don't have the hardware by which to have cognitive speech. And I just wonder if this isn't one way in which we are created in the image and likeness of God. Words can be used for evil. In fact, uh, there was a man, he was born in Austria many years ago. He was seemed like a normal child and a young man in the military, but at some point he had some ideas and he understood the power of words and he began to communicate the ideas in a book, Mein Kampf, and then he began to speak them and he spoke them wherever he was. He understood the power of words and he used the power of words. He spoke to few, he spoke to multitudes, but he had such conviction in what he spoke, he really believed what he spoke, and he was able to move an entire nation simply through words. He understood and he used the power of words to commit unspeakable evil, unspeakable atrocities. He turned a nation of brilliant, good, wonderful people into murderers without compassion, without feeling to slaughter multitudes of people and then cast them, throw them into ovens, and uh, scatter the ashes of living, vital human beings. Such evil through the power of words. He changed an entire nation. But he was not the only one. Across the English Channel, there was another man. He was a military cadet and uh, he grew up to be kind of chunky. He liked hats, and uh, he enjoyed a good cigar and a, a little uh, shot of whiskey, 
uh, we hear, but he understood the power of words. And uh, he became the leader of the nation of England during the time when his nation was being bombed and decimated. And what he would do, he would use the power of words. He would get on the radio and he would speak, speak words of encouragement, words of strength, uh, words of faith. He understood the power of words and he used it to hold an entire nation together in a time of war. And the things that he said, he never flew a plane that we know of and he never drove a tank, but he did use the power of words to strengthen an entire nation. Dear friend, you have the power of words. You also have words. This is what he said. We'll fight him on the beaches. We'll fight him in the landing grounds, in the fields, in the streets, but we will never surrender. He told those people, we will never surrender, and they didn't. The power of words. He was like a rock, like a foundation, like a lighthouse. There was another man born about the same time, North Carolina, the United States, and uh, he was, we would call a skinny Bible school student, but he sensed God calling him. And this man understood the power of words. And he took the power of words, the ability that God had given him and God has given to you and to me to speak words of life. His source was the Bible. His truth was God's truth. He believed it. It was part of the very fabric of his being. He understood the power of words and he spoke words of power, of truth, and through this one man, God did incredible good to hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, yea, even millions of people through one man who understood the power of words. And you and I also have the power of words to do incredible good. You can speak, I can speak. We have this God-given ability. Well, you know, people fight with one another. They fight like cats and dogs or dogs in the street. Words can be used to fight or you, words can be used to bring life. And when they want to shut the early apostles, they told them, stop talking. They forbade them to speak. They could sing, they could pray, but don't speak. Why? Because words are important. Words have power for negative or for good. And uh, to bring joy to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, we use those words. Stop the criticism. Stop it. It's so easy to criticize. And what would happen if we all stopped criticizing and we used the power of words to affirm, comfort, encourage, praise, show appreciation? In fact, we have power and influence with people through our words. You do. How about what's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable? If we think on these things, we'll talk about those things, and rather than criticize, we'll lift people up. Do you agree with me? Of course you do. Some of the great leaders, Ronald Reagan, the great orator, they call him, Moses, a great leader, because he spoke the words of God. And in the book of Acts, you know, God came upon people 
and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they begin to do? They began to speak in a way that God, the Holy Spirit, gave them the words. And we can speak the words of God, pray with the power by speaking words, by worshiping God, by crying out to God. We can make a difference through our prayers, through our intercessions, to our speaking with people. If only human beings would use the power and authority that we have been given to speak the words of God, we could change the world. We could change our immediate world and change the world beyond. And so, dear listener, God has given you incredible power. It's not dependent on your muscles in your arm. It's depending on how you use the incredible power of words to pray, to lift, to encourage, to bless a hurting and a dying generation. Abraham did it, Moses, David, Isaiah, the apostles did it, Apostle Paul did it. And today people People are hurting. All oh, the, the pain, the children starving right under our noses on planet Earth. People are being killed. People are being starved to death for political reasons, and they're dying. And you and I can make a difference by the power of words. The spirit of life is obedience and being yielded to God and praying and this great world has great need and you and I can make a difference. Jesus said, I'm with you. He will not leave us alone. And so it's our turn now. It's your turn now. Those great men, they're gone now. It's our turn to use the gift that God has given us to change this world, the magnificent power of words. God bless you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And then they will bring pleasure and joy to the heart of God. So let us begin where we are today and go into the future. And God is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his presence with exceeding joy. To him be praise and power and glory. Amen. Amen. And amen.